Yeah, I don't even know what to say. Uh, it is <laughs> a day in America. One of those days where I wish we had um, Brother Bernie Mac still alive with us to be able to sit on his little chair and be like, America, y'all tripping. Um, but before we get there, welcome to this bonus episode. Special edition. Special edition of Rushed Vibes. Um, whoo. Because there's just so much, there was so much that we were prepared to put into this bonus episode prior to today. And now, I don't, I don't even know. I, even before today, Dave was like, oh, we're just, it's going to be a short episode. <laughs> um, and you know it's an emergency episode because I'm in a hoodie with my glasses Not on. just any hoodie, though. I, I had to wear, I had to bring, bring uh, Auntie Ruth back. You know, not fragile like a flower, fragile like a bomb. Um, but I really wish it said, what would Ruth Bader Ginsburg do or say? Um, but here we are. I'm Jess. And I am David. And we are Mr. and Mrs. Rushed Vibes, audibly and physically, um, for those of you watching on YouTube. And... Um, you know what? Let's start positive. Let's start positive. We are, we started today in a celebratory mood. Yeah. Why are we in a celebratory mood? You want me to take that one? Am I, is this yeah, that was, that oh, that was, was, that the, was the oop. That was the oop. Okay, let me catch it and put it in. Um, we are celebrating today because Georgia had a big day yesterday. Georgia. And, well, yesterday, last yesterday, and into this evening, or into this Georgia. morning, excuse me. Um, as many people know, yesterday was the uh, special uh, special election for the for the Senate runoff for Georgia. Um, the neither of the four candidates, I believe, in November achieved at least fifty percent of the vote, which automatically triggers a runoff in Georgia state laws. So they. Uh, they ran it back. Mm -hmm. So they ran it back yesterday and um, it went well into the night. I was up till 2 a.m. watching watching Wolf Blitzer and John and King John King do their do their thing. And uh, at some point this afternoon, uh, well, uh, Reverend Warnock, it was called for him uh, late last night, early this morning, excuse me, around 2 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., between there about. And uh, they, they also called the race for uh, Ossoff earlier this afternoon. So that gives um, the Democrats a majority. It's actually 50-50, but obviously once Biden and Harris are sworn in, that gives the Democrats the tiebreaker uh, with Kamala Harris being the, the tie-breaking vote. So that means a lot of different things. That means... Mitch better have my money. <laughs> Mitch McConnell is now the Senate uh, minority leader. Chuck Schumer is in the Senate majority leader. And um, assuming Biden keeps his word, well, one of the first things he'll do, probably the first thing that he'll do is um, send out $2,000 stimulus checks to the country as many people are in need. And the 600 Ain't was not, nothing. it was not very sufficient. So if you notice, Jessica, her glass is full. Mine is empty, save for a couple of ice cubes because here on Rush Vibes, we can't do anything normal, right? Nope. Can't do nothing easy. Nah. Can't do nothing easy. That's not our vibe. So, being dramatic. And extra. It's extra, what, yes. And, 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 and pulling from uh, our, our Twisted Tea <laughs> episode, uh, I have a... What, what you got? I got a peach, <gasps> peach crown, <laughs> peach crown flavor bottle here that, um, you know, wanted to shout out the peach date. The Georgia peach. And Peaches. shout out Canada, which is where Crown Royal is made, because after the day that we've had here in America, we are either relocating to Canada no. or going to ask, ask no, Canada oh, to, to um, adopt us um, back. Like, they never had us, but come and get us, Canada. Justin, Trudeau, Trudy, come save us from ourselves. 
Yeah. So normally with, and with any episode, we, we have multiple topics that we want to touch on, but, uh, due to the events of today outside of, uh, the final, uh, Senate race being called, uh, for Ossoff, uh, today was uh, a singular event. And no, there were things that happened today. I, I feel like we, we need to ease. We need to ease into like the conclusion of today. So what I want to first start off with. Okay. Well, since this is your podcast. This is my podcast. I'll let you, I'll let you go ahead and do you're this. You're a guest here. Um, uh, stay on my lane. Drink my I, I kind of want I kind of want to talk about, first of all, what did my drink? Because uh, some of the feedback I got, someone suggested that I should say what's in my drink, give drink recipes. So I'm calling this the Senate Peach. Someone, someone said that? Someone did say You're that. You're getting DMs already? It's the only DM I got. Oh, um, okay about it no i got a few texts about my voice um so Yo, this is real quick because you guys know i love my sides for those of you who have been with us for the four or five episodes that we've 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 been a thing jessica has gotten more compliments on her voice <laughs> than we have of this podcast and it's like in its entirety like i was talking to one of my friends who i'm going to link up with excuse me, this weekend. And he said, Hey, I got to catch up on the podcast. And by the way, my wife said, uh, to tell Jessica <laughs> that she's in love with her voice. And that's where that was like the seventh compliment I've, I've received to pass along to Jessica this week. Um, I'm assuming that means the podcast is good that they're enjoying the content, but I guess if nothing else, people will tune in to listen to my wife's voice. So well, I guess that's our secret. You. I guess that's our secret sauce. I appreciate it. And it's it's funny because my voice is actually one of the things I'm very insecure about. I've always felt that I have a very like deep <laughs> deep voice. Um so I, I don't usually like to hear myself speak. So to get all these compliments uh for my voice, I really do appreciate and it. Nobody's nobody said anything about my voice, by the way. So I just wanna if any, if anyone wants to have sympathy on me and just kinda stroke my ego a little bit, feel free. Not like tomorrow, because then it'd be kind of obvious. But you know, down the road, a couple weeks, you have a about great a month. Voice. Uh, just you know, give, me, give your brother some feedback. That'd be appreciative. Thank you. You got you got a nice voice. Thanks. Cool. Um, so I Moving have <laughs> so a segue. I have man. I, what did I call it? The Senate Peach. Oh um, yes, I'm sorry. You're drinking. So it is Crown Peach, a little elderflower liqueur, some bitters. I put agave nectar and um, limoncello LaCroix. So it's like a little spritzer. Spritzer. Okay. Um, not bad. So I'm just drinking straight peach with a couple of ice cubes, which is not normally what I do. You know, I normally drink my, my whiskey and bourbon neat, you know, gentlemen. But, um, you know, every time, once in a while, you're drinking a, a pour with, with a decent flavor and you want to enhance that flavor, bring the flavor out. Sometimes you want to drop a little... <laughs> A little water, a couple of ice cubes in it. So that's what I've chosen to do here tonight. Um, and it's just been one hell of a day. So I just kind of need a little bit extra oomph, oomph. In, my, uh, in my beverage. Please continue. Okay. So before we jump into today, I because I just, I feel like I have you so much. This bit. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me do the bit. That's what we're going to be known for, the bit. Let me do, do the bit. bit. Um, let's start with the weekend. Not the days of the weekend, but the actual individual, the weekend. Who I thought we were, this was, no, we were no, talking because about, because I, I, I don't. To, I need to ease into this. I, I need to I ease. Mean, I don't really care about. I need to ease into this. He's done plastified himself and looks like a Mattel doll. And are you just not going to respond to I don't, <laughs> I have no, no opinion on what celebrities do to their faces. Because people, you do, because you showed me your, your, you were like. It caught me off guard. I, I, I remember seeing him at the mo one of the more recent uh, award award shows, and he had his face uh, bandaged up, uh, and that, I, I, that it, was it's Hollywood, so I, I figured I figured it was you know performative. And I was scrolling Twitter last night while we were watching the returns come in, and I saw that he had finally taken the bandages off, and he actually had plastic surgery, and he looks like a mannequin with, you know, the mannequins that where they put the make the makeup on their mm -hmm. cheekbones to kind of like simulate. It's kind of what he looked like. Yeah. And then I was done with it. Cause I, yeah, I mean, he's, he can still, Same. still, he's a really good artist. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll probably listen to his next album that he drops. Um, I listen to his present one that's out every once in a while, 
But you know, people in Hollywood have been doing plastic surgery for years. I feel so. like they created it. So he's no longer just a weekend. He's a long weekend. He's a long weekend. Um, and I, I have I have a way that I'm rolling into this. Sure. So you got the weekend. So we see his news. He's unbandaged. He's you know he's Barbie. Um, and then this morning, I believe we heard about the potential split of our former presidential candidate and his wife, the Kardashian West clan. So I bring all this up because, you know, we were on this high of like, yay, Georgia, you know, y'all came through, you send in the first black man from your state to the Senate, you know, Ossoff, he's, 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 he's coming. He's, it's taken a minute, which I'm still confused with the numbers. Like did some of y'all, vote for Purdue and Warnock. Like, y'all just explain that to me later. Um, And then it was like news of Kanye and Kim splitting dropped. And DC just went into calamity. So I'm wondering if they are contributors to the current state of the day. No. I feel like they are. They're not. (laughs) Because kind of like, like, I feel like there's always a shoe that drops before everything just loses everything. I am more than confident that what happened in D.C. at this Capitol building, uh, none of those people were concerned about Kim and Kanye Kardashian West or West Kardashian, however they they position their last names. I'm quite, quite confident. So I. I don't, I don't know. I feel like I feel like they they no. contribute. It, to I it. mean, it, divorce is is unfortunate in any in any regard. I know Kanye is uh, a unique individual. He's he's very polarizing. Um, some people are like, "Yo, if you really listen to him, you know what I'm saying? You you really get what he's saying, you know what I'm saying? Because he he be on a whole other philosophical level. You know, he be, he be getting deep, and y'all y'all sh- you know y'all y'all y'all, y'all too shallow. Y'all shallow. You got to get deep with him." And then there are people who are like, "Nah, this this dude's this dude's crazy. He's he's he's, he's whack." So uh, there may be some people rooting for them to to not make it, and you know maybe they they finally got their wish. But if ultimately you know two people are in a relationship or in a marriage, and they're in one or both of them are not happy, then you know uh, it's it's unfortunate. It's sad. We'll uh, <clears throat> and you know, we'll we'll see what happens because I know they have they have kids, so that's that's always kind of it's kind of sticky. When you have moved, babies, yeah, moved for a divorce when you when you have kids, so that that is unfortunate. That that did also cross my my Twitter timeline, so I, I was aware that the Kardashians, the wet Kardashian Wests, were uh, rumored to be on on the outs. Nice. But so now that I've I've gotten that out, and I did that on purpose because if we had just started. With the coup d'etat that took place today, I just would have, I would have, I would have gotten too deep, too quick. It just would have been too much. So I needed to ease, ease myself into it. So laying down on the couch, Solace is in the next room doing her virtual schooling. I'm, you know, with the baby, watching CNN, trying to get the confirmation for what's going on. They, you know, no, I think they were, they had cut off TV on um, local channels and they were showing the um, Congress on, and the Electoral College and all that, you know, determining who the President of the United States is, even though we kind of already know. Um, you know, you got your people who were like, no, because Arizona messed up. Um, And then it shifted. And then there were people protesting and walking through downtown, um, not downtown, D.C. And, you know, initially I was like, okay, cool. Like, don't don't really care. Just a bunch of people walking around, you know, the Trumpers. Um, And then the tone kind of changed. So I think I was distracted. I was on my phone because I kind of lost interest in the protest. I I didn't really want to see it. I was waiting for them to, you know, confirm um, if Osof had won or not. And then I, I see that, you know, they're breaching the Capitol building. So I'm down here and I'm texting David and I'm like, yo, 
that it's getting real. Uh, I'm not even going front. I was like these white people wilding. <laughs> And he was like, what? What's going on? And I said, they breached the cap. So I'm giving him a play by play. I'm like, they bre- they breached the Capitol. They're doing this. They're doing that. Uh, turn on CNN. So he was like, whoa. So then we like transitioned into a couple of, of gifts back and forth. Because um, I was like, Let, let's see how this plays out. You know, DC got a 6 p.m. curfew. It, it was insane. And I, through all of it, I... I slowly processed that this was America. This was an official government building that civilians are not typically allowed in. And this was a protest that was that armed forces, police were seemingly unprepared for, which doesn't make sense because it was organized. They knew it was happening. And someone on my Facebook had shared a story, like a screenshot where they were trying to get directions to D.C. And even Google was not giving directions to D.C. So if Google was prepared, where were, like, where were the police? Where, where was the National Guard, who I believe the mayor of D.C. requested for last night to be there? to be prepared for the calamity that everybody knew was going to take place. Um, And just the sheer unspoken yet spoken fact that had this been an organized Black Lives Matter, any, uh, any, in any group of color doing this protest, what took place today would not have taken place. And there probably would have been more people dying. So it's definitely a very interesting and polarizing moment today. Um, It was hard at times to believe that this was America. Um, You know, I, I've known, I've heard about coups, you know, there was a coup in Ghana, like, think, like, and, you know, when you think about coups, you think about Africa, and you think about South America, and you think about, you know, the Middle East, I'm sure there had been a coup or two in Asia, um, but you don't think about things like this happening in America, something about the stature of America, these type of things don't happen, so to essentially watch it live, and to have to sit here and wonder, like, what's going to happen? How did they let it get this far? And how did only one person get be, be a casualty of this? Um, I have so many thoughts and feelings and, and emotions that I feel I need to work through and process. And I feel like I've talked a lot, so I'm, I'm going to let you talk. Um, yeah, I mean, we went out to dinner this evening and... The, the television in the restaurant had had the news on, of course. And I remember making a comment to the table that we were out with. Did I say we were out with our friends? You said we were out, but you could Okay, yeah, we were out with, with our friends and um, or a couple of friends. And I remember making a comment to the table that, like, I just, like, I, I'm seeing, I've been seeing these images and, and seeing, you know, the video feeds for probably at that point three or four hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I still, I still didn't really know how to feel about it because it's just, I was, I was literally numb in terms of, I just had no, I had no feeling because I, there were just, there were just so many thoughts racing through my mind, uh, that I couldn't quite have a true reaction. And, you know, maybe I still don't have one, maybe I need to sleep on it. And, and kind of reprocess things in the morning. But watching these individuals collectively storm uh, our nation, our, the Capitol building um, with Confederate flags and Trump flags and don't tread on me flags and some interesting war paint and, and hats and... Um, you know, attacking police and damaging the building and going into congressmen and congresswomen and then, you know, they're going into offices and and just doing really barbaric things. I actually, 
the first thing I thought about was Colin Kaepernick. And I remember, I mean, we all know Colin Kaepernick's story. And I remember a lot of the people who are likely to have been in the crowd this afternoon charging the Capitol, accusing him of being an American, of disrespecting troops. Unpatriotic. Unpatriotic, disrespecting everything, disrespecting the flag, everything this country stands for, everything people who came before him fought for him to have the rights to be able to kneel on the sideline before the national anthem, you know, disrespecting them. Um, and I remember our president, the president of the country, excuse me, uh, referring to him and anyone else who kneeled as sons of bitches. And I remember people egging him on like, yeah, you got to support our flag. You got to stand for our troops. Um, you know, I, I remember countless unarmed black men being shot or killed at the hands of police and name, you pick a state, pick a city. Uh, I remember Sandra Bland being pulled over (laughs) for not signaling to, uh, change lanes, getting out of the way of a police officer and, the officer having a Napoleon complex and then escalating the situation unnecessarily. Three days later, Sandra Bland ends up dead. Uh, I remember people who would likely, who are likely to have been in that crowd this afternoon saying, oh, just comply. And everything handled itself. You got what you deserve because you complied. Oh, nobody, you know, if you don't run, police have no reason to shoot you. Mm -hmm. Respect, respect authority, right? Um, so I just have, you know, I, I, I try very hard not to be, um, I try very hard not to be, uh, you know, I, I, I try to try to see both sides of everything. Um, but you know, there's really no there's there's no two sides to what happened this afternoon, um, and it starts with the current president of the United States. Uh, people have been saying he's dangerous, he's reckless. His rhetoric is going to get you know cause a lot of harm. Saying there's both there are people the good people on both sides in Charlottesville. Uh, stand back, stand by. Uh, least racist person in the room as as much fun as we had with that like there are you could literally see the trail of bread clump bread crumbs excuse me leading up to what happened this afternoon um and people have been calling it out 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 uh but there are people who for whatever reason because because of their angst for 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 liberals and socialism or uh abortion or just the fact that they don't like Hillary Clinton and they're still looking for those emails. They support everything uh, that this man has said and this man has done. And it all led us to this afternoon. And, uh, you know, Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz and Candace Owens and Tommy Lahren and Kaylee, whatever her, whatever her name is. Um, Anyone who has been marching to the beat of everything that the president has, has, has said and encouraged and honestly just flat out lied about Mm -hmm. are, they are complicit in what happened this afternoon. And anyone like, like it's, there's no, there's no like justification anymore. Right. Like I I think it's, it's all outside. it's, It's all out the window because when this stuff was happening, uh, the president of the United States had an opportunity to calm everyone. But where did he go? He followed the Secret Service protocol and he went into hiding, right? Uh, Pence had to call in the National Guard. So there's really no excuses anymore in my mind. And 
you know, we're five episodes into our podcast there. I, I hate to be getting too political. Like I, we had the conversation this afternoon, like we're supposed to be talking about marriage and relationships and we haven't talked about marriage yet. Other than the fact that we say that we're married, but allegedly, <laughs> I let you know, no rings on the fingers. Um, Oh, no ring on my finger. Sorry. Yeah. Like it's, it's, there's just no excuses anymore. Um, you know, it, and you, there's, there's really no justification for supporting the person who's in office, regardless of party. He's, He's dangerous, and I think that this afternoon kind of, you know, kind of put all that out in the open for for everyone. No, to see. it didn't. We we done known this. No, but I'm what I'm saying is is that Charlottesville put it out in no, the open. No, absolutely. But this is Charlottesville is what happened in Charlottesville is tragic and it was terrible. But there's a difference between Charlottesville and the capital, mm-hmm. right? Like this is there were there were Republicans and Democrats and Independents in those in those chambers, right? When they tried to storm. And that's so, something that we need to we need to unpack. But before we do, let's take a quick break because I'm a little hot and I need some more. I need to refill. Okay. Cool. It's your position. Okay. We have actually to, actually didn't refill by the way because I was getting yelled at. So yeah, because I was trying to do the bit. Um, so we have to unpack a lot. Uh, first, let's start with one. The first thing that that triggered me, some I, I had someone had the audacity to make a post about all of the people who were protesting during the summer and rioting and looting. Biden didn't say anything about it, but Trump supporters do it one time and everyone's losing their mind. And if I could smack someone through the Facebook, I would. Um, this is how people get unfriended because I, I have a big pet peeve when people try to compare civil justice or injustice to not getting your way there. There's, there's a big difference. Um, and I'm, I, I'm still flustered in the mind, so I'm not using the right terminology, but police brutality, injustice, recognizing that the majority of times that a black man or woman interacts with the police leads to a death, an injury of some type, and it doesn't happen to other races, is 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 something for uproar, is something to be upset. I'm not condoning looting. I'm not condoning rioting. I'm here for peaceful protest. Um, but I can understand after year 400 years of being enslaved, getting freed, and then having to deal with injustice after injustice, and then thinking that you're finally in a place that you should be equal and still having to worry about when a police officer is on the interstate near you or at a stoplight did you do something that gives them grounds to pull you over how are you going to respond and then someone can still die in that interaction while they're trying to do something right and then comparing it to your dissatisfaction that your imbecile of a candidate um did not get reelected for president and is forcing to find grounds that are not there to justify why he did win when it's obvious he didn't. They're two different categories. So that's that's the first thing that I just needed to get that off of my chest. Um, the second thing that I wanted to address is, is back to the unpacking. This was the nation's capital. This wasn't, you know, just a random big city in America. This wasn't New York. This wasn't Miami. This wasn't Dallas. This wasn't San Francisco. This was the nation's capital this is where the president resides a building where senators and congressmen and women meet to make decisions that affect everyone in this nation that should be probably maybe the second third within the top five secure buildings in the country was breached by protesters so peaceful is peaceful's out out the door. This is not looting, you know, somebody's convenience store, which I don't condone, which is unfortunate. This is not, you know, tearing down the walls of a Walmart. This is this this is the capital. This is where our nation is headquartered. Was breached. 
This is something we see happen in foreign country. This is coverage that we watch on news where reporters are in, you know, Baghdad or, you know, random countries, random cities that are in coups that have poor leadership that have corruption and people are fed up so they're 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 taking a stand for their rights as humans this is what we see there america has set itself on this pedestal that you know we are we are bad and bougie these things don't happen here we are organized we have it together like we will come and regulate your country because you guys can't handle it and the simple fact that it happened here for not only us Americans to see, but for the world to watch. How embarrassing is that? How it, it's still mind-blowing to try and process watching this take place and watching officers in on the Senate floor pulling guns and, and pointing it at doors as people are trying to break in, watching random citizens stand and sit where the vice president was just, and I'm not a Pence dude. I, I just, I just don't rock with him like that, but Pence I, woman. I was going to say, Pen, all, I was going to refer to not, Pence. I, think you all know I was going to refer to Pence as dude, but I was like in it, I was trying to do the bit. Um, and then you, you just had to correct me. Didn't oh, you? I'm, sorry. Uh, I'm not, a, I'm not a Pence person. I, I, I don't rock with him. Um, I know he's VP, but I don't really know what he does. Like he just kind of pops up, and then you don't see him. It's like that. That friend. according to Sarah Palin, you know, he gets to go down in there into Congress, and he gets to control the. Is that what she said? <laughs> Recently? Yeah. No, it was it was a long time ago. Okay, so I was like, was I didn't even know she's still. I haven't seen in, her since the mass. Like in singer. charge of in charge of Congress. And, yeah. And then, um, sorry. I, as just a regular American citizen, would not dare sit where he was sitting. Like, you have to earn that. And you had these people looking like Braveheart, and they think they're patriotic, and they think they're saving. I just, I can't mentally process it. And the fact that people can still defend it and equate it to police brutality when, you know, here locally in Charlotte, there there were peaceful protests where, you know, they're still doing investigations because the police barricaded everyone in a street. They blocked off both ends of the street and they shot them with tear gas and rubber bullets and these people could not get out. They had to fight to get through a parking deck. This was in Charlotte. The, just Charlotte, not even the capital of North Carolina. It was just Charlotte. And you had these people protest, breach the Senate, and one person was injured. Or I believe she died. Um, may she rest. But are you, are you kidding me? Like, are, are, how does this happen? And how does this make sense? And how do you justify it? So I will say this, like, movie screenwriters... Producers, directors, like, I don't want to see any more war-torn Africa, war-torn South America, war-torn Middle East. Like, y'all are war, we are war-torn America. So y'all can start making your movies about the coups that are taking place right here, right now, and leave us alone, those of us from other places, because we are tired of being misrepresented, because y'all are crazy here. Like, right now, I am, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not claiming this right now. So it's actually very fitting um, and not by mistake that I'm wearing my, my Thanos hoodie because as my adopted big little brother Alan would say, Thanos was right. He absolutely was right. And I, I wish that we could, someone could snap their fingers and eliminate at least however many people were out there at the, the Capitol today because Y'all wild. They're some of the most fragile individuals I've ever laid eyes on in my life that they don't have the intelligence to understand that the information they're being peddled is just wrong. It's a lie. It's been it's been debunked time after time after time. Um, and they don't have the ability to, you know, 
just to say, just to take a step back and just be like, hey, it's just really real. Can I, can I go fact check? <laughs> can I look at something other than, than Alex Jones or Tucker Carlson mm-hmm. or pry my, not pry my gun from my cold dead hands dot blog spot dot com whom whatever crazy <laughs> weirdo is is running that blog um they don't have the ability to to dis- <laughs> just decipher all that nonsense and just realize that hey i'm being had is an is is an okie doke uh and people have been people have been this is like I don't and I don't even know if this is the climax, which is what is crazy because there's two mm-hmm. more weeks before January twentieth, right? Like I I have no idea what's going to happen. Uh yeah, two weeks to the day, right? Yeah. Probably yeah, sure. Inauguration I, it's, is two weeks it, Like I, I literally I did not think that this was possible. Uh but since this has happened now, I have no idea what what else mm-hmm. could could happen but people have been calling this out literally for the last four years like something is going to happen if we don't like deal with the situation and what the situation is is the person in office but it was impeached but of course because there's a republican majority in the senate the impeachment was you know didn't stand a chance Mm -hmm. so you know i just hope that everyone is is awake now and i don't want I I don't I I, I, my hope is that people won't blame the individuals who stormed the Capitol because while yes they each had to make their decisions and while I think I just laid out that they're all pretty stupid because they're following you know the rhetoric that they're receiving blindly uh, so you almost can't really blame them because they're just dumb but no you can you can blame I know I'm just don't get them I'm just calling them dumb uh, they don't want to be saved. So, but I, but I hope people don't try to place the blame all on them because they had to receive their messaging mm-hmm. from someone, um, and that person is was sitting in the Oval Office until they they took him into to hiding. So, which why did they do that? Like I, that's that's protocol. I get protocol. It's, but it's, well, it's, then it's, that's it, that's your answer because it's, it's protocol. It's, it's funny. He's that still the president of the United it's States. It's funny that he didn't like put up a fight with like no these are my people. Let me uh. Let me go talk to them. Let me go hang with them. Like, why weren't you down in the trenches walking with them? Like, if even like senators who were high, like Ted Cruz and all the other fifty eleven people, why why were you hiding? What because these yeah, people are he- these people the are- same reason why they tried to downplay the coronavirus and then were like the first ones to to get their their vaccines. So it's it's politics. It's it's the people. <sighs> It's it's just it's what you come to expect. It's, it's but okay. what I'm trying to say is, I, I hope all of us here spectating, watching what unfe- what unfolded this afternoon, aren't only placing blame on those individuals. I, I hope that you hold all parties responsible. Um, we're in a pandemic. You know, our elected officials have jockeyed back and forth over whether or not to send help to you know the constituents who put them there for literally for almost like I think the last. Stimulus was what in March? No, no, it was like it, it was end of April, maybe. It was April, May? Okay, so we're we're not that far from like a year um, before until uh, this. Well, we were nine months, I think, before this last round of stimulus was passed, um, and it was just them like literally trying to to have a ruler test, like whose was bigger, I guess, between you know McConnell and and Schumer and as and, they and Pelosi. collected their checks, I right? Guess. As they as they got their salaries, uh, and then you have. You know, been you know they've been peddling this, you know, fraud, election fraud, and and it's just like place the blame on these individuals. Yes, it's wrong. Nobody wants to see that, but but place the blame at the feet of the of the president and his minions who have been, you know, echoing just the nonsense that's that he's been spewing from his mouth. So, you know, everybody needs to look themselves in the mirror, um, in terms of if you've been defending. Him and saying, "Oh, well, it's not him. It's people. No, it's both sides." And like, nah, we got. We don't have both sides. Both sides don't have a president. Mm-mm. Have a representative in the Oval Office. We got one in the Oval Office, uh, and we have one party in power in the Senate. So, like, start look yourself in the mirror and 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 like make a decision over these last two weeks. Are you going to continue to make excuses, or are you going to like 
hold your elected officials, all of them, and, you know, the person who we put in office accountable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I try to be impartial. I try to respect everybody's rights to, you know, uh, to, to support who they want to support. I get people, you know, don't support people for one singular reason. It's a multitude of reasons. But, you know, what happened today is inexcusable. And the response to what happened today from our highest office in the land is excuse, was inexcusable or lack, lack thereof in terms of response is inexcusable. Um, and, and the kind of shit that they're still going out and saying, uh, he went out and spoke this afternoon and Rudy Giuliani, who's talk about a fall from grace. <laughs> uh, he used to be so, I believe they used to refer to him as America's mayor. Yeah. Like I, like nine 11, he had so much respect. I just like and fall now from grace. I'm like, so wow. I, I, uh, you know, I, nah, I'm just, I'm, I'm not rocking with with any of them mm -hmm. um, and anybody who tries to, to defend anything that's happened today and anyone who had delivered messaging prior to today that encouraged what happened today. Like, I'm just, I'm just not, I'm not here for it. Yeah. So um, Congress is still going to do their thing though. They're still going to move to, to officially certify uh, Biden and, and Harris's victory. Um, so that means once that takes place, I don't know where it's going to happen. I don't know if they're going to go back to the Capitol tomorrow or what. I imagine there'll be much more uh, security there than there was today. Should Excuse have been me. there from the um, jump. And they're going to have to sanitize it. So it's going to happen. Um, Biden will officially be president-elect. It will be the media declaring the winner. It'll be official. And then it'll be, we'll have two weeks and then we'll see what happens on, like, I don't even want, I'm, I don't even want to get to inauguration day because I'm scared of what's going to happen. I know they need to put Biden and Harris in that little Pope mobile. <laughs> um, and just, and just because no, it's, I, yeah, these people tripping, tripping. It's, it's like, crazy, man. I would have expected this kind of chaos when Obama was president. Um, but like, this is, this is something else. But it's fr it's it's a bunch of fragile individuals, is what it is. And then who, who, all the who, conspiracy theories and the well, that's, gate and well, that's all the of thing. This. That's the thing, right? Like, like Hillary Clinton, who I'm not really a fan of. Like, you know, Hillary is yes, yes. we'll take her leave. Like the Larry David, the, the Larry did some shade. The Larry today. Da yeah, she did the Larry David gift where he's like, like yes. that's how I feel about Hillary. Like. To, uh, take or leave her like I, I'm, I'm, I couldn't be more indifferent but she said during the debates in what 2016 I guess 2015 that like anytime Trump feels like he's losing he finds a way to say that like things are rigged against him mm -hmm. so when he came into office uh, before you know because he was behind in all of the polls so he was like oh it's gonna be rigged it's gonna be rigged against me this isn't fair they don't, they don't want me to win. I'm not a politician. I'm coming in, so they don't want me in. I'm going to drain the swamp. This is literally the worst day to so, be Trump uh, <laughs> um, But then he wins, of course, right? And mm -hmm. then he gets in, and then, like, the press starts holding, the, the, the media starts, you know, holding, trying to hold him accountable. Of the fake news media, they don't like me. I don't know why. It's fake news. New York, New York Times, fake news. Jeff Bezos, Washington Post, fake news. But the thing is, is when you st when, like, I remember we had a lot of fun with alternative facts, right? With with Kellyanne, or Conway, Skellyanne, or Kellyanne Scamway, or whatever her name is. Um, alternative facts, like we had a lot of fun with it. But there are people out there who actually like believed it, and you, and all you need is just it, you just need the seed to take root, right? And then over the course of four years. It just keeps growing and growing mm -hmm. and growing. And then you get a bunch of people who believe the media is the enemy of, of, of the country, right? Uh, um, that they're all, they're all conspiring against us and against one person. <laughs> um, and the only truth, the, the only people who can deliver the truth are Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity and Tommy Laren and Candace Owen and Charlie Kirk and, Why do and you know Ben Shapiro names? because I pay attention. And, I um, pay attention more than um, names. Um, um, Quartz and, uh, and, and Felt, <laughs> two black women, Diamond, Ilk, Diamond, Silk, whatever the fake oh. whatever the names are, Quartz and, quartz and Velvet. <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> and them little whack, those little whack twins. And like, uh, all these people just trumpeting, no pun intended, over the course of four years. And then you get to this moment where they finally lose, right? They've been ha, ha, cry hard lips, snowflakes ha, 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 for four years. And then they finally lose and then they can't take it. And so a bunch of these fragile individuals, they come up to the Capitol and they want to whine and then they want to tear stuff up. And then the person in, in the Oval Office is just encouraging it. So all of this really started four years ago. Mm-hmm. And there were people calling it out like, yo, this is dangerous. They this- called it out themselves. Lindsey Graham, that's what the shady um, tweet that Hillary shared, where Lindsey Graham straight up said, if we elect, let Donald Trump win, he yeah. will we will destroy the Republican Party. He single handedly yeah. destroyed the Republican Party. All respect that people have had for the GOP, like it's gone. Like no one's down with GOP no more. Like where y'all not cool no. You, you guys were seen like liberals and the Democrats are seen as like, oh, they're you know, they're too free spirited, they're too free, blah, blah, blah. Y'all have no backbone anymore. Like the no, no, I, I- that I, grand old party well, I will, image that they had, I feel like they so lost it because of Trump. I will actually, I will, I will push back on that and say that there are some, which is why you have like the Lincoln Party, uh, you have Mike Michael Steele, um, you have uh, what's his name? I Mitt? can't, huh? Mitt? Nah, Mitt, nah. You talking about no backbone? You talking about Mitt Romney? Um, you have um, uh, uh, they're like uh, like true. True moderates, True, real Republicans. Uh, yeah, like real Republicans. Um, there, yeah, there, there are some who have. Yeah, there are some who. There are a lot who have spoken out um, against him um, and have tried to kind of round up the troops in terms of who are the true Republicans left. But they're they're outnumbered. But I don't even know that you can actually consider like the the, the diehard Trump supporters. You can't really consider them Republicans. Mm-hmm. I just can. I just call them MAGA. <laughs> just who, and I. What would be interesting is. You know, with whatever happens with Trump, um, however they get him out of D.C., like what happens to that base once he's gone? Like that'll be the most interesting case study, like probably in in recent modern history in terms of what happens to the Republican Mm -hmm. Party once Trump is gone. There's going to have to be a split. There's going to have to be a party like just how they say like they're progressives. Um, that are just too extreme in the Democratic Party. There's going to have to be some kind of MAGA split. Like maybe this is the point where we create more than two political parties. Um, like I've always felt that to spill there time. are far too many people. I'm gonna need you to just put me a little bit in here. There are far too many people in the United States to only have two major political parties. Maybe this is the point where they split. Like add the MAGA people, let them have their own little tribe. Um, let the you know the true Republicans have their tribe, and then also do the same within the Democratic Party, where it's just you know your your Democrats, your you know your I don't know. Somebody needs to design this, but it's just it's not it's not working and i well i think honestly what what this will will do is ultimately i I think this people have been talking about uh, it happening for a long time as long as i've been you know uh, an adult that this might actually be laying the groundwork for a third party in this country Um, it needs to be four though can we get to three first before you talk about four? No, like this because, isn't this isn't a because, professional sports league. You can't just do like you can't just add expansion parties. No, no like, because this, you can't if it's just, three and it's like, the yo, wrong we just, we third. Gonna, we just gonna add two more parties, y'all. Like it's not you can't it's because not that it could easy. be the wrong third, and then you have no. it's just MAGA, and that's not balanced. No, I'm. I didn't say it's gonna be like the ideal third party. I just said this is probably going to lay the groundwork for a third party. Okay. All I'm saying, again, but you, I'm not, you're acting like you're Adam Silva over here, like yo, we're gonna get we're gonna get two expansion parties. Okay, we're gonna have a draft. Okay, we need. <laughs> you guys get to get to pick every Here's every party. Every party has to designate <laughs> 20, 20 representatives that they're gonna send over. Wild, but no, uh, I, 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 it's gonna be very fascinating. I think to see what happens post January twentieth. Um, and that includes what happens with Trump. Does he get prosecuted? Like, like what's what's going to happen with him? Uh, uh, that'll be. Does he go out in blaze of glory? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I, like it's just crazy. I, he's going to go out kicking and screaming. Um, I, I hope that there is. I, I mentioned this at dinner, and I don't. I, I always see it in like movies. Um, they're like that international 
court that like holds countries accountable, like leaders for corruptions and stuff like that. Maybe they're putting all the groundwork paperwork together to hold stuff against him because America is not going to do it. So I'm hoping like the UN, um, somebody is working on it like the geneva convention like whatever something is happening where people are figuring this out but to my to the true republicans i hope you guys are genuinely grooming someone who is not who is not trump who is not maga rick wilson i'm sorry that's the name of the other uh one of the leaders of the the lincoln project it was it's been bothering me since i couldn't call his name like steel Rick Wilson, um, Kelly, uh, Kelly and Scamway's husband, um, he's involved in the, the Lincoln Aren't Project as well. Divorce? I don't know, okay. but he's he's involved with it as well. Rick, and what, Rick Wilson. they're the true Republicans? They're, they're like the, yeah, the traditional Republicans like, who have rejected Trump. Um, like free as, the slave yeah, Republicans. Yeah, like Essie Cup, she's been on, uh, I don't know if she's still on CNN, but, you know, she's 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 uh, a, a notable uh, Republican. Okay. Uh, your girl on The View. Um no. She's she's Republican. She's she's Anna. Republican, but she's not my girl. Oh well, I'm saying Anna. Um, oh Anna Nav. Oh, I yeah, love Anna. She's Republican. I thought you meant Megan McCain. Whew. No, but she but her her as well. So I mean, whether but she you, and Anna. Well, yeah, but I mean, you're, you, just because you're in the same party doesn't mean you're going to agree, and doesn't mean you're going to like nah, each other. Megan McCain is is. We're we're, we're not talking about Megan. Um, we are going to do an episode where we no, just talk not. about how I troll Megan McCain I, on I Twitter. I won't be here. That is literally all that's I do on Twitter. That's going to be a solo. That's going to be a solo the view rush vibe. It's going to be. A, it's going to be a Jess vibe. Jess vibe and episode. It, like if this thing ever blows up and I have to go on the View, like just be I, like, yeah, I said it. I'm not scared of her. Like no one should be scared of her. Whoopi, like so they had Warnock on the View today, and everybody's happy and smiling, and she just starts berating him about packing the court and wanted her questions answered. And Whoopi was like, if we weren't virtual, I would smack you. And she just came back from maternity leave. And I'm like, I already need you so gone. It's probably, probably the, the hormone settling, right? Isn't that a thing? Okay, so that's not something that you you should say as a man. Oh, but that's, I, I thought that that no, was true. No, that's just who she is. Okay. But so hormones don't settle after, after birth? <laughs> I mean, hormones aren't like ashes. No, I mean, like, you know, to you gotta. It's a house. It's settling. It's settling. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> Foundation settle. It's like, no, it's just, I mean, uh, you have hormones and they, right. they stay. So, um, I apologize I'm if I offended, I'm if I offended any women. I'm almost a year out, and I still have. I apologize well, if I offended any, any women out there. Um, y'all can I didn't come mean for to him. Be, I didn't mean troll. to be insensitive. That compliment about DMs, his voice you were going to send, just my just D- turn it into my a DM, troll. My DMs are closed in case you want to send any hate mail. Okay, so just send it all to her. Um, yeah. Let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back and wrap up. So, yeah, I will do an episode, whether it be by myself or with David, about how I um, I troll I won't, I won't Megan McCain. Um, but, but yeah, I, I'm, the politics, the climate of today, like today should have been an amazing day just off of the victory that was that the history that was made from the state of Georgia. And, you know, all of that was diminished and f- over overlooked because of what took place in, in the Capitol. Um, so it's unfortunate. I, I A black man. Georgia sent a black a man black to the man. Senate. And, you know, for and someone I think there's who, only ever been 10 black senators like in the history of the country. And like, I think he's, he's either number 10 or number 11. And from this, like the South. And, and before we get before we a wrap black, this up, a black man. So can I, we can we just give a round of applause and just just I didn't go to an HBCU, but the HBCU pride that I have is so high. And I I I we I think we spoke about it on one of our practice pods. Um, but if there's one regret I have in life, it's that I did not go to an HBCU. And I am so adamant on making sure that our it's always children. Grad school. Yeah, but I won't get that in-person experience. I mean, you can get you a dorm. <laughs> anyway. Um, Johnson C. Smith right down the road. We get you. We get I'm you, sorry. you commute. I, I've seen them dorms on that trip. Oh, oh, man. Shout out. Oh, man. My bad, hey. Smith. I've, I've seen some. That was her. That, not me. If anybody look, from Johnson C. Smith sees this. If y'all went to Johnson, you know that that's not where it's at and i'm i'm bougie so i just my bad but much love much love and respect Dang. i know some great people who went to smith 
um, and y'all are holding it down and repping. But most of y'all lived off campus for a reason. Anyway, I have such HBCU pride. I plan on really exposing our kids because between just all the black greatness that has taken place in American politics, it it's just so great to see all of the the statements about you know the world's not all black, so you can't you shouldn't go to an uh, an all black school because you won't experience that, and just seeing them take over. I applaud you all. Um, and then a quick shout out to uh, Mackenzie Bezos too. Know yes, McKenzie, I don't know. Right? The, I just, she's just Mrs. Mrs. Bezos M- Mrs. to me. Mrs. Bezos um, for she uh, she's on some goat status, but also like the goat in chief right now is Stacey Abrams, and that's a whole podcast by that's a whole episode by herself because she she really like I feel like. Pastor Warnock is going to preach a sermon just about her and well, how you try to be seated somewhere and you don't get seated somewhere and you yeah. accomplish more. And yeah. so if you need a testimony, sometimes you got to grab someone else's. Yeah. And she mm. and she was, she, I mean, you can make the argument that it was fraudulent how, how she lost. I and mean, mm. you would talk about fraud. Mm. <laughs> but the we ain't going to bust it up into no Capitol building. The person in charge of the, the election was her, her opponent. He's like, nah, <laughs> you I know, won. And, so I mean, there's just there's already there's just an understood amount of of scrutiny with that. And but she took that like she took it oh, and, and gracefully and, and turned it's your probably, whole state has blue. probably been more impactful than Not she would probably. have been. She has definitely than than she would have been as governor. So yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, sometimes it, it takes an elder to wind up in 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 the spot that mm-hmm. you're supposed to be in, and you can be way more impactful. So yeah, Stacy is. Goat, definitely, definitely goat in chief. The goat status, like I don't Shout know. Out Stacey Abrams. She's she is like she is real life Olivia Pope, but not unlike the drama people die and stuff like that. But she just what she has done and the impact of her name. Yeah. I applaud that woman. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's it, it was a it was a historic day for sure. Um, I, I I would hope that even you know even if you weren't you know, left leaning or progressive or, or Democrat that you could appreciate just how significant it is that, a, that Georgia sent a black man, uh, to the Senate, mm-hmm. uh, even though it's not, not for your party, he's still a Senator for your state if you're in Georgia. So, um, I mean, it's just significant. I mean, just to th- just think mm-hmm. <laughs> like in the history of this country, like only 10, 10 or 11, I, I'm pretty sure it's how 10. He, he might, he might make 11 senators have have ever been black uh and you know a a black man from georgia who graduated from moorhead more no (laughs) sorry there's a street in shock like on moorhead Morehouse, Morehouse people. Please, I'm y'all, sorry, it's don't, a crown. This is why I don't drink. Crown. Look, if y'all gonna come for somebody. Come for her, not me. But remember, he was talking nah, about women's hormones. That settling. trumps. Nah, that trumps because you can't sit here talking about oh because there's a HBC, no, 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 HBCU. I didn't go to an HBCU. I have such affinity. I didn't go to an I HBCU. I have such love. This is what happens when you don't go to an I HBCU. I have such love. And then You're what, what did you do? You trashed Johnson C. Smith's dorms. Because I've seen those dorms. I'm you sure. ragged on them. Shout out to Biddleville. Washington Heights, we see you. We do. Um, and then you're going <laughs> to botch. Like, you know, we have cousins who went to Morehouse. We got a cousin. Ramon. And I. Ramon, look, Ramon, you if you what? see this, I'm sorry, bro. You know what? It's my sorry, postpartum cause. hormones. Nah, 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 I, nah. I just had a baby. Nah, so you can't I- claim. <laughs> that baby about to be one. <laughs> it's it's my hormone settling. That baby They're is settling. about to be this one. Is the foundation of my hormones. Nah. No, but we really do. You can Google it. We have a street in Charlotte called Moorhead, and I don't. I just mis misassociation. Yeah, I we might gonna get her. We gonna get her out of I here. I might y'all. be dyslexic. I don't know. Hate mail uh, coming in strong. <laughs> y'all know it. My heart strong. is pure. My heart. Y'all know my strong. heart. God knows my heart. Um, Morehouse. My bad. On that note, before we <laughs> before we shoot ourselves, and we don't have any more we don't We're have any more feet to shoot ourselves. Spell in. woman, I can I, I can um, always find a way to mess to mess something up. Oh, much respect though, y'all uh, forgive me. It's yeah, late. so we um we definitely went a little hard on this one. Uh, I there was a I had a thought to say, hey, maybe we should wait until tomorrow to record this. But no, I just sometimes I feel like it's real to be it's it's best to be genuine and real. 
um, we've been watching the news and then watch reading headlines and then reading, you know, news bits all day and, you know, really just needed an outlet. And this was part of the reason why we started the podcast in the first place was so that we could have a platform. Obviously we could sit here and talk with one another and, and that'd be fine. But, you know, we, we've had people who appreciate our opinion on mm-hmm. certain things. And we've been asked even today to give our opinion on this, which is one of the reasons why we actually just went ahead and recorded an extra episode this week, which means double the work for me this week. And less sleep for me. And less sleep for me. Even less sleep for me, probably, because right. I'm about to go edit this this right, right now. now. Yeah. Right so, now, right now. Right now, right now. so uh, <laughs> yeah, so this is definitely a, a, a bit of a shift from from the tone that if you've been watching for the last four episodes, but, you know, sometimes it's necessary. I mean, we're, we're you know, we're two people here in, in, in this country and, you know, we we have opinions, which is why we're here. And sometimes those opinions are really strong and that's what you got tonight. So hopefully you appreciate uh, the sincerity and uh, and you know the transparency, you know that that we spoke with, and um, you know uh, we're all in this. Ultimately, we're all in this together. Mm-hmm. So, and nobody really knows what's going to happen in the next two weeks. So, let's all hold hands and <gasps> and pray together that uh, we we get through it and we can can cross over to the other side in a Biden Harris presidency with a uh, Democratic majority in the Senate and the House. And you know, hopefully, they won't. You know, they won't run amok either so uh i don't know uh this was fun doing two episodes in two weeks mm-hmm. or two two episodes in the same week uh even though we won't get much sleep and this this episode was it was kind of a, a somber uh topic the main topic but uh maybe this is something we'll experiment with here in the near future but um yeah we just felt like we we owed it to our loyal YouTube viewers. We almost got a hundred views on our first YouTube video, uh, twisted T vibes. So, um, if y'all could share, you know, and we can get 14 more views. We want, we, we, we like milestones around here. So a hundred views on, on one episode would be, be pretty cool. And, in in a, in, a, in a week, well, it'd be a little bit over a week, but you know, uh, make sure you're following us on, on all social medias, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, check us out at rushvibes.com. Uh, we're there. Every Wednesday, we'll we'll drop a new episode. So uh, don't forget if you uh, if you're if you're feeling in the in the giving mood, uh, this is you know we we do run this all on uh, on a bit of a shoestring budget. So uh, there are some there's some great things that we have on our roadmap that uh, we'd love to be able to do in terms of production mm-hmm. quality. So uh, if 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 you know if we provide a value to you and you know you feel inclined, you can definitely uh, donate. Uh, we we have Cash App, so that's dollar sign rushed vibes are U S H D V I B E S. Feel free to, uh, donate. <laughs> um, yeah. You got anything else? That's all I have. I don't. Okay. Yeah, Cause if I start talking at all, just, you know me, did you mute? Don't mute my, Oh, I thought you were going to nah, mute my <laughs> mic. <laughs> all right. So, uh, we appreciate you guys. Um, Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. We value every single comment, view, subscriber we get. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, We we love having the Vibe Tribe. So um, until next time, um, stay safe, wear your mask, social distance, and let's all hope that we get through these next two weeks. I'm Dave. I'm Jess. This is Rush Vibes, and we'll catch you on the next one. Y'all be good. Let me down